Hi, this is right here with Gamma Ray Crafts and I'm here today just I'm doing a flip cup um, pour that I'm actually pretty excited about so I wanted to share the process with you real quick. Um, one of the things I'm really gonna be having fun today with is these Pebio, um, they call them iridescent um, kind of color shift paints. So it's the you know, this is the uh, iridescent violet blue, and so these are um, similar to, this is the iridescent blue-green and the iridescent green-yellow. So these are similar to the folk art um, craft paints that are the color shift paints, um, but they're a little bit um, higher quality. They're, you know, had better quality of pigments, um, higher pigmentation rates. Um, I picked these up when I was actually at a work conference back in January, and I've used them a little bit, but this will be the first pour I do with kind of using a significant amount of these, so I'm really excited to see how they hold up um, doing a flip cup pour as opposed to a tree ring or a wing pour, which is what I've been using them for so far. Um, to kind of set these off, I'm doing some darker colors with them. I used um, a mix of Prussian blue and ultramarine, about 50-50 mix to kind of get a kind of a medium dark blue in between the two. Um, I also used Payne's Gray, um, which is kind of a very, very dark blue-gray tone. Um, and I've also used my kind of my basic white mix, which is mostly titanium white, a little bit of metallic white, and some opalescent medium. These have all been mixed with Floetrol, um, mostly about a one part paint to three parts Floetrol mix, um, because these aren't quite as heavy body as the Artist Lofts Acrylic, which I often have to do um, you know, a little bit more Floetrol with and then a little bit of water added to get them all to that kind of warm honey consistency. The other thing I've done is I picked my range of colors. So it was the iridescent blue, the iridescent lime, the blue, the kind of mixed blue color, iridescent kind of violet blue color, white, Payne's gray, and I mixed two of the cups going in that order, two of the cups going in the opposite order, just to try and see when I flip these across the board, the canvas, kind of layering the paints in the opposite directions, what kind of effect we get um, in the finished piece. So let me grab my canvas. Um, so I've got, I think it's an eight by 16 canvas. This was, uh, kind of a canvas I bought for playing around with and doing a little bit of experimenting. It's not a super high quality canvas. Um, it was, you can probably notice there's some little lines in the back. It was a kind of color your own canvas that I picked up on clearance that I've, um, covered with a coat of gesso to cover up some of the lines because I'm using some transparent pigments and I don't want too much to show through. I'm hoping not to have those colored lines peeking through my work. The couple of these I've used so far, it hasn't been a problem, but I do put a coat of gesso on there just to kind of do some initial things. And I apologize for the big um, shadow on here today. The lights I usually use for videos, one of them melted yesterday. So I need to uh, pick up a new lights. I only have one light coming in from here and my light from above, so I've got my whole camera um, casting a shadow and so until I get a new light I'm gonna have a kind of an unbalanced light thing going on, so hopefully I can get that fixed soon. Um, thankfully the camera just melted, or the light just melted and didn't catch fire, so that was a win. Um, so let's get these on the canvas. I should mention um, all the colors except the white did get um, two drops of dibethicone, um, which is a type of silicone. 
Um, I this is actually the first time I'm using this particular brand of silicone as well. Um, kind of interested to see. I've been using just the three in one silicone from the hardware store. I picked up some of the Cell Magic um, silicone oil that you can get at pretty much all the craft stores now, but it's um, a lot thicker than the other silicone oils I've been using, and I am very excited to see if that makes a difference in the cells that I'm getting. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so I think I moved the paint around and stretched this to where I'm really happy with the result. Though, of course, like any flip cup, this is going to change quite a bit overnight. But here's the result for the moment. Let me give you some little details. Um, One thing I didn't do and that I often do is that I didn't put a coat of white down um, before flipping and I just, yeah, it's one of those things I often do and then question, how oh, do I really need to do that? Does it make a huge difference? And yeah, I think, I think that's something I'm going to decide is uh, worth doing. You might have noticed I added a little bit to the corner to help that paint flow over the corner a bit more. Um, I think I just like the way that it's a little easier to move the paint around the canvas if I have that layer of white. Um, but there was a discussion in one of the groups yesterday of if you really needed that or not. You, you don't have to have it, but I think, I think for me at least it is much easier to get that paint moved around if you have it. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's got some really nice movement um, in here. I like that kind of kind of ribbony section. I love the cells going on up in here where I've got some nice big cells. I love these little kind of peekaboo, you know, nested circles in here. And that kind of blue color shift paint did not want to make very good cells, but you know, big cells. So that's why I went ahead and torched some of the areas where I had a lot of that sitting on top um, just to get the little cells and I think that that kind of made a nice contrast with some of the bigger cells that the pink and the paint gray was giving me. Um, the up in here, the kind of the green and the blue together were doing some really nice things so I didn't torch this area. I think that actually turned out really nice all on its own. So there we have it. Um, I definitely think that silicone made a big difference. I'm going to be using that again. And I really want to thank um, the folks over at Pebio who gave me some samples of those iridescent pigments. I have know on the ones that I have used uh, previously, some tree ring pores with them, they have turned out absolutely amazing. So I can't wait to see this when it's dry in a day or two and get it out in the light. So thank you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.